Hello everyone, since it's international break, I thought, how can we treat our subscribers? I thought, I know, I'm going to get a special guest, I'm going to get someone that's funny, someone that's popular, someone that's a big West Ham fan, and hopefully someone that's a celebrity for the clickbait. Now, unfortunately, Dan and Dyer was un unavailable, yeah. but he <laughs> sent Bell along. How are you doing? If you try Danny and then you try Ray Wins, <laughs> and then you got me. That's yeah. how it works out. So, are you like the wish.com Danny Dyer then? Is that what you're saying? No, mate, I'm not. I mean, I know where I am in the pecking order. We're all, <laughs> we're all custom house boys, and it was Ray at the start, and then it was me, I think, and then I got usurped when Danny became King of England, um, and his, his, his daughter plots up with that centre forward. I can't compete with that. Anyway, appearances on Hammers Chat, Perry, three, Danny, zero. That's all I'm saying. You're three nil up now. Has Ray been on? Ray's been on once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good, he's good value, Ray, isn't he? Yeah. Um, That's but... words, Ray. Yeah, so it's your hat trick. Tonight's your hat trick, Perry. Yeah. Anyway, uh, right, let's talk West Ham then. What do you make of our season so far? It's been funny, G. It's been, it's been funny. Started off so well. Really better than we expected. If, if we're really honest, none of us saw that coming. And to come into this international break, the third international break, I mean, this has been more interrupted than the World Cup last year. It's, you know, it's, it, uh, it drives everyone bonkers. The world goes stupid. You ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> Oi! You get me on because there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> but um, no, I'm, 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 I'm really anti it. It's, it's just getting too much all of this. But there's been lots of good, lots of bad. Where do you want me to start? Um, well, we'll, well, we'll start with the good, but well, let's start positive because if we start with the bad, people will go all oh, negative and they'll switch off. So let's start with the positive, lure I'm, them in, then we'll hit them with the negatives. I'm the same as you. I watched the other night and you just went, if someone had really given me this at the start of the season, before we go into the final international break, to be where we are, be in both cups, you know, we, we, we've, we've had some good results. We've had, a, I think we've had about two stinkers. Really, I mean, there's other ones, even the like Man City and Liverpool. I think we'd give a good shot there. Um, but I'm just getting a little bit fed up with Mr. Moyes not giving people a chance. I'm finding it and, and giving other people who, let's face it, some of them don't even want to be there, putting them on the pitch. We, we, we were the best under 21s in the country last year. We've brought in some brilliant players. We've let go of a lot of good players. All right, it's to be seen whether they go on and do that. But they, but they are playing for other clubs. But this kid, Mavuma, um, he's only had a couple of little run outs. So I think he, he, he got a goal disallowed in his first one, didn't he, and whatever. But I'm not sure if he got two goals or something like that. He's, he's not being given a chance. And to me, I look at him and I just go, what do you get? If, what, what do you want if you've got an ageing Antonio? Um, and you want to play the system, your Moyes ball system and whatever, when he can't do that anymore, he can't hack it anymore. Well, look, here is a perfect copy. He's a big lump, that kid. You know what I mean? He puts himself about and he's fast and he wants to make a name for himself. And for him to... Now he, now he's not even... Hang on, what's that coming up on here? I've got something to come up on the screen. I shut it. I don't know this stuff. You know what I'm like, yeah. Um, it's Danny making sure you've come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I just, I just, I just find it staggering that when we've been in certain situations, chasing a goal or something or whatever, that he will turn to Ings. I've got nothing against Danny Ings. I mean, he's been a great player and scored lots of goals over the years, but it doesn't fit. It does not fit. And there is, you can feel it. There's a collective groan around the stadium when Moyes wants to change things up and that kid's either on the bench, he's not been on the bench lately uh, because apparently he doesn't want to sign a new contract. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. And that's the trouble. That's what we're getting to. We're called the Academy of Football. We've based ourselves on that since the late 50s. And we have brought through some of the world's best players as kids. Um, and we've got that there and we are not utilising it. Um, and we are, we, you know, Cresswell doesn't want to be there. Four nows, I've loved four nows, but no, that's not happening at the moment. He's not the same player. 
Ben Rama switches on and off. He can be brilliant. He can be incredibly frustrating. We've brought in some brilliant players, which, you know, I've always... I don't, I don't want to be anti more. I really don't. But I'm just picking what we're talking about, this start to the season and things. And it's... I can't help but think... You see, a bit scared of, of, you know, letting some players play football. You know, and... and you know, he's gone there now, and in order not to play a boomer, he plays them out of position. He, he plays, you know, Bowen's doing brilliant, but he's not sent forward. Caduce, he's moving in, moment. you know, it's kind of like playing the players in the positions that they're really good at. This is the way I used to look at football, and they work as a team. Um, don't play players who don't want to play. Get them out. I mean, I know it's easier said than done, but that must be costing us a fortune in wages. Some of that, some of that subspens. And these kids, we've paid money into the club to bring them through the next generation. And it looks, it seems to me like it reminds me of when I used to play like sort of club schoolboy football and all that sort of stuff. If you ain't getting in, you just go, you start talking, all of you. He's going, well, I played well the other week, and he's he put me on the sub bench again, or I'm not even on the bench. Um, and it won't be long before that generation picked apart. Um, and, you know, in a mad way, we'd be like a cut, cut price Chelsea in the fact that we've got all these young players, but they're all out. They've either left or they've gone to other clubs or they're unknown or, you know, and it's, I find it really frustrating because there's been a lot of situations, G, where he could have, you know, blooded a few of them. Um, and, and he's not. And that doesn't inspire. That doesn't inspire that team sort of thing. I find it very odd. I find also, on the subject of the team as well, um, captaincy is non-existent. Zoom is not captain. I'm really sorry. He's not captain. He can't play two games on the bounce. We pretty much know that. So we're a captain down for one of the two games if we play in Europe. Well, that's no good. There's nothing there. We had nobs for years. And we had deck as well. And we've lost them. We've lost a, a, a voice in the middle of the pitch, right? Now, this is my, this is my solution. Come on, then. Let's, let's hear it. I thought about this a lot. And it's actually made a few people go, oh, actually, Alvarez. Alvarez has got the spirit. He's got, he plays like a Billy Bonds. He plays like, you know, he, he don't take no shit. And I think giving him a captaincy, because he would tell people what to do, where to go. But it might give him a bit more, you know, responsibility in terms of all the bookings that he's getting. If you're a leader, I mean, he didn't do any harm with Billy Bonds and Julian Dix to have a captain like that. I think that's massively missing on the pitch. That, you know, okay, when we play well, we can be brilliant. We can be devastating. But when we're not, we look like lost sheep. There isn't someone in there. I would, you know, everybody was thinking that, you know, Will Prowse would come in and be automatically captain. And, yeah, I mean, you kind of think that's, that's good. He was that at Southampton and stuff. But he's quiet. He's not... We Those players on that pitch need to kick up the arse sometimes. Um, and Ed, Ed, Zuma doesn't give it. He doesn't. It's kind of... I just think that that might give him some responsibility to curb himself a bit. Um, and, you know, even if he doesn't, he's crunching in, leading by example. Who else can you, who else can you name? Yeah, who, 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 no, I, 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 was, I was trying to guess who you were to say, actually. And I, um, I thought you were going to say Ward Powers, but then you said it made people raise their eyebrows. I thought you were going to say Paqueta. Um, but I'm, I was on a, a, the right sort of way went guessing. It was someone obscure. I think if Bowen was vocal, he'd be a good candidate, but he's too quiet. And, and he's... Yeah. he's Sort of self-confessed quiet, if that makes sense. We both yeah. been asked about it before, and he said, oh, "I'm not one of the louder boys in the change room. I'm not one of the the big characters or that." But when we played, um, was it no? It was Olympiacos on Thursday night, um, and we were winning one nil in the last few minutes of the game. And he started a bit of a riot down in the corner, didn't he? He started having it with some of their players. I thought, "Here we go. This is this is the type of stuff I like because yeah. I do feel in some games we have lacked." that leadership from Zuma at the start of the season when he got it and it wasn't official I thought he was playing quite he was playing well though Zuma was putting out man and match performances so it was easy to sort of find yourself 
convinced by Zuma being captain, but there's been some games recently. I do feel the referee's been there to be persuaded, if you want to call it that. And I found myself frustrated at the lack of presence from Kurt Zuma. A, getting in his face a little bit, but also B, just trying to win him over, because I feel like we've been on the, the wrong end of a few decisions recently. It hasn't cost us anything just yet. But like mm. when, when we played um, Newcastle, the referee was just giving everything to Newcastle. How Bruno Bruno should have been sent off, then the free kick that they scored from was never a free kick. And that's where you need your captain to just say to the referee, cut this out. I can see what you're doing. You're giving away lenient free kicks. Just have a word with him. Um, and we've got the privilege of speaking to Anton Ferdinand Yes, on, on a fortnightly basis, and I asked him about you know, do you win over ref? Is it a thing? Is, do spectators make it up, or is it actually a thing? He said, "Oh, absolutely." He said he used to try and do it all the time. He would tell the referee, and yeah, and he said like the referee lets you away with one or two. You you'll try it again and again until the referee says cut out. You'll keep on going. So I, I see where, I see where you're coming from on that one, Perry. I wouldn't be against it. Alvarez, I don't know enough about him um, in regards to Mexico, so whether he's been a captain previously before mm. coming to West Ham. But it wouldn't surprise me if we were to go and look it up and discover that he has actually been captain on quite a number of occasions before West Ham, I guess. Positionally on the pitch. Yeah. Getting in front like that. You know, I, I can't stand it when goalkeepers the captains. And you know, that's just that's like ridiculous. It's come on. You know, you, you you're not even aware of this is what's going on and stuff. And I don't know, maybe a bit of responsibility might do that, but we do need a voice. We we're so lucky we had nobs for so long. Yeah, um, it was easy, weren't it? Declan was the sort of apprentice like that, you know, and he come on and and that's... But it seems to have been ill thought out. I don't really remember any big ceremony about Zuma being made captain. It was a bit like, oh, yeah, he's got it today. I, I don't um, think... I, this is my own opinion. I don't think they could have a big one because of what he did with Cat. I think had West Ham announced on a grand scale, he's our captain, I think a few charities... Well, would have started highlighting the fact that we've got an animal abuser as the captain of the football club and they didn't we didn't particularly agree with it. That's my own opinion, though, Perry. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, I, I, we find it, I mean, I, there's nothing funny about what he did at all, but I find it strange now that when we go to a ground that we haven't been before, or especially in Europe and stuff like that, it starts again, doesn't it? <laughs> there. <It's> like, <laughs> Everything. And you think, well, that's good. He hands over the little flag, you know, like we do in Europe and all that sort of stuff. And boom! <laughs> you haven't even kicked a ball yet, but that, no, it's not going to. Um, but no, I, th I think that is missing. I, I really do. And I don't know whether with Moyes that that kind of suits him. That he, he you know, they, they, um, as I say before, I'm not anti Moyes. I kind of get frustrated by him. Because when when we when we're allowed to play and when it clicks, so far there have been some fantastic goals. They said quite a few. When was the last time we had players who were like you know four, five, six players who's got five, six goals sort of thing? Like the goals are there for us. People can take them, and, and you and you know what comes with that is that if you if you score, you want another one. It's a buzz, you know, um, and. We, you know, we've got the potential. You hear commentators say it a lot on the telly as well. And it's, it's it's always like that on paper, on paper. But it really is. I mean, you know, some of the things that Pakatar and Caduce have done, um, I love. I love it. I mean, I know they lose it sometimes and stuff like that. But Caduce looks like he just wants to beat everyone. Um, and eventually he'll get fouled. And if he gets fouled outside the box, then we've got Wolf Prowse. And then we bring the big guns up. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I don't think it's rocket science. I'm not saying that me or you could manage a football team and stuff like that. But sometimes I find it a bit bewildering. The, you know, especially, you know, late in games and stuff like that. And you just think, what are you doing? Oh, he's, he's warming him up. Well, it's, if I can see it, the opposite number can see it and just go, brilliant. They're putting him on. They're <laughs> A really good one. Yeah. Him, oh God, he can't run. Get into him, you know. Do you, do you think the other manager has fake conversations with his coach? Because if I were the other manager, I'd stand as close as I could to Moise's <laughs> dugout, pretend I'm whispering and be like, oh no, they're bringing on Danny Ings. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Yeah, well, he's gonna score. He is. We're in trouble if Ings comes on. Go on, go on put him on. Put him on. 
Dalton oh, Moyes got up his sleeve now for us. <laughs> Maybe when Mubama warms up, they think, ah, oh, forget that, no chance, forget him, ignore the fact that he's warming up. But I think he's fighting now that if he starts Mubama and Mubama gets an hat trick, then he has to play him. I, I don't think he would, I think he'd still drop him. Yeah, he'd still bench <laughs> things. If, regarding your, your subs warming up, I was saying it to Gonzo earlier that um, on Thursday night when it was 0 0 against Olympiacos, and Ings and Fernal started warming up before anyone else. And I was generally like, oh, they hadn't even come on. They weren't even getting ready to come on. They were just warming up. And I was already like, oh, for God's sake, this is what we're going to yeah. do. We need to go. They, <laughs> they, weren't even, they didn't even have their shirt on, Perry. And I was already pissed off at the subs. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, was already, I was already getting angry at the subs, even though the subs weren't even coming on. Um, yeah. Luckily, they didn't come on. But that's what it's done to me now, that when I see them warming up, I just get annoyed. <laughs> Luckily, they didn't come on. <laughs> well, well, it's true, isn't it? Um, we went on to win because they didn't come on. Um, yeah. But anyway, you've touched on David Moyes a little bit there. I want to get more from you, though, mm. because there was a lot of speculation regarding his job again before the, the two games that we've just played. We've won them both, which is, at worst, bought him some time. Um, at best, you know, he might be here till the end of the season. He might get a new deal. But what's your thoughts on the manager? <sighs> It's 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 so difficult. It's the, 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 like I said before, the stubbornness is wearing me out a little bit. It's it's kind of, uh, and I don't like the last couple of games post match interviews, especially when we've been on that run or in the middle of that run when someone's asked him and said, you know, um, you know, you're having a bit of a sticky time, man. Isn't no, we're not. It's almost like saying, you know, what are you talking about? We're, we're, everyone's fine. Everyone's great. Camera moves over his maboom. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, we're not stupid. People aren't stupid. Okay, you've got to play the bluffing game with the other manager and stuff like that. You're not going to give away all your tactics and things. But I, I, I just kind of, I don't, my, my argument is, especially when we're in the Caraval Cup and in, in you know, the Europa uh, and certain league games, and you know, what is your objection to trying something? Because otherwise, if you don't do this, you get yourself with an injury pile up and you're going to have to play the players that for some reason you don't fancy playing. And then you're throwing them in. Do you remember Allardyce years ago when, you know, he sacrificed all them players because I forget who we were playing. but Not we in Forest. Yeah, not in Forest. And he just went, no, we we'll save it for City. And we got spanked 6-0 by City five days later, do you know what I mean? Which negated that whole thing. It's kind of, if we can all see it, why can't he at least cut half an ear to, you know, like, right, well, it's a stubbornness, I'm afraid. And and, and I don't like the stubbornness. I like, you know, people, hold, hold your hands up. If something ain't worked, hold your hands up. Equally, take the applause when, when you have done so. And he has, this, this is the whole thing. It's hot and cold type thing. Um, but I don't I'm not I don't know what they're up to over there, what their plan is. They're not telling us and there is a plan somewhere, um, a long term plan. Um and I think you said the other night as well, it's just that, you know what is it what does he have to do? He's won a trophy. If West Ham sack him, he'll get how many million for that? He's not skin. He'll get another job in a top flight. I'm sure he will. So there's there's no pressure on him. The pressure's on us. We're the ones who will still be there. We're the ones who come before him and will still be there after him. Um, and I think, you know, you can't let supporters pick a team. Obviously you can't because we, for all, all our opinions and, you know, we do have knowledge, you know. I mean, I used to, I, I kind of used to sit next to like Tony Cotty at West Ham and some of my great mates are from the you know 86 side. Um, and watching a game sitting next to an ex pro is really weird because you kind of you say stuff like I'd say to my dad or you, and go, well, you need to do that, they're doing whatever like that. And it's the biggest buzz in the world when an ex pro just goes, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely bang on, and you go justified. <laughs> I could have been a contender, I could have played. So, the point is, we know our stuff, 
we we're not stupid about football. We probably watch it more than anyone. Um, and to dismiss, in, in, you know, like by just not even entering the conversation about why you won't do this or why you do that. Um, and and I and you know, I, I just think that it's kind of we're at a good time with this club. You know, it's it's we can still say we're massive. We know it winds everyone up. All it takes is one win and we're massive again. You know, we, we've we've got a bit of silverware and we've got some fantastic players. You've just got a bit, it's like Morecambe and Wise, isn't it? I am playing the right notes, just in a slightly different order. <laughs> just play the best team that you can. And if that doesn't work out, don't play Deadwood. Don't play people who don't want to be there. They're costing enough money as it is. And... There are, ain't going to be it. Don't forget as well, going back to the captain's thing as well, he wasn't a captain, but we lost Dawson. Dawson was of that ilk. Do you know what I mean? At the back, a bit strong and stuff like that. That's what I mean about it. And, you know, and, and I kind of, you know, I don't think it's that hard to fix because we've got, we've got the skill sets up front. We can murder teams. We really can. But it's, it's needing, I, 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 I I suppose that comes back to Moyes. It's just that you need someone on the pitch to to get in. You know, everyone keeps doing this at the moment, footballers, when they score. Come on, you know, like, now support us. And it's like, well, do it. <laughs> but you don't have to wait until you've scored. We'll back you if you back us, you know. I don't know. But it's not bad. I mean, I'm sounding, like, terrible here. I'm sounding like it's, you know, isn't it awful? It's not at all. We we, we, we we would have loved this at the start of the season and it's a lovely feeling in a poxy time when you when you got no football really apart from Mickey Mouse internationals and stuff but it gives you that feeling like we go into this break two wins on the bounce we're ninth we're in both cups right now <laughs> Tottenham goes first couldn't write it oh my God. I've been waiting that one i've yeah. had to wait 10 games and suddenly it's just like oh here it comes here it comes the spursy buff coming up. yeah um, they uh, i seen i seen a stat the other day pavy that um because tottenham scored so early in that game then lost it so late that's the longest anyone ever in the Premier league has gone winning and lost the match because really? Yeah, because Wolves scored in like the 97th and 99th minutes or something. So they were at Tottenham were actually leading for like 95 minutes in the game. Yeah. Um, and they lost. So they broke a record there. Well, so it's, it's, almost, it's almost as good as our record, Perry. We broke uh, a 60-year-old a record. We broke it. Longest English team, longest unbeaten run in European football. 60-year-old record. We broke it. 33 days later, Man City took it off us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It would have been better if someone hadn't said anything about that, if no one had noticed it. Do you know what I mean? Before we got about five games ahead of that, and then you suddenly go, wow, that would take some beat. But, yeah, I mean, and then we shouldn't have even lost that. That's the thing. That was a, that was a bad kind of setup. up really. Yeah. It's the first time watching us, the, the way that we've gone about stuff, where I just thought, this is not happening. This is not happening. We are a better team than these. Yes, yes, they've been in Europe 50 years. Well, how many Greek teams are there, you know, that qualify? It's a bit like Celtic and Rangers being in the Champions League. They will always be in it. But, no, and we proved the other night. We, we you know, we are, man for man, a better team. Um, but fair play to them and everything. But, yeah, it's, it's a little bit annoying. But we are massive and we are still champions of Europe. Before, before we move on to the next topic then, um, David Moyes, to summarise, would you give him a new contract? Would you let him go at the end of the season or is the jury still out for you? It's it's it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because you just know if, if we come back after European break and go on a six-win run, it's, you know, everything changes. It, well, put, put an asterisk next to it, Perry. Say, this is my opinion currently. However... I may change my mind depending on what I witness for the remainder of the season. Okay, that's it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I kind of... He's done a lot for this club. He really has. I mean, you know, whatever people think of him and stuff, we've, we've been so spoiled 
in a lot of ways. Um, but for the first time in my lifetime, you know, we've sort of got used to being, well, one, we're in Europe every year. And apart from last season, two, we're sixth, we're seventh, we're ninth at the moment. Um, it's our, our outlook has changed in terms of what we're satisfied with. Um, and to, to, you know, we've had some brilliant, brilliant wins. We know, we know on our day, we can beat anyone in the Premiership. We, and we have. Okay, you can't, you've got to do that consistently and stuff to, to stay up there. But I think, I think we are definitely, I don't see us any less than the top 17, really. Do you know what I mean? And yet, go back a few years, um, up, down, you know, like sort of relegation fights and stuff like that, being a bit of a joke. Um, lots of teams, we, they, you know, they come in, we always spank West Ham, we always do this and whatever. And we started chipping away at that a bit, um, which is it's ironic because it's a statistic, but ultimately it still gets in the heads. You know, like when we beat Brighton. You know, yeah. Uh, it always beat us, we're going to get beaten, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, boom, no, done. That's finishing that. Now you can't say that unless you do it again for another eight games and stop us winning. And and it's funny how that can can rub off and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> I think we still bought his... I mean, the buying thing, Gio, that's the whole thing, isn't it? It's like we, we're just like... <laughs> what's Stiden doing? What's, what's Silly Ass doing, little man? Uh, Sullivan. Um, what, 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 what is that in it? I mean, at one point he had his, his kid running the women's football team. Do you know what I mean? It's you know, that's all oh, that's beyond me. But then you go, is Moyes going out and picking players? And then you look at boom, the coaching staff, all those players, one one by one, all left. And you kind of that makes you just go, what's hang on, what's going on there? You know, like. One is all right, it's unfortunate or whatever. But when you talk three or four in a very short time, they're all gone, well, I'm out of here. Um, that's worrying. Um, and I kind of I never like it when I look at the West Ham bench and the play the, the coaches that are around the manager and I look and I go, I don't know who that is. Got no idea who that is, what his name is. But do, do you know what I mean? Harry, they've got initials on their coat for you and everything. <laughs> There's a big clue there. Well, no, apart from DM, that's it. It's kind of like, no, what I mean is, it's just that it's like, I like I like looking there when there's, you know, like there's Nolan and there's Pierce and I'm a big believer yeah. in that old strategy of get those players who know what it's like to put on that shirt. Um, and I don't like to see him go, you know, I didn't like it when Pierce went. Um, and, and that's, you know, it's not just with Moyes, that's happened over the years, obviously. But it's, I think it's so important with, with us, that identity of that really more Hurst and Peters started. We can't brag about that unless we keep carrying it on. Because otherwise, it's a bit like a stupid thing. Uh, as you come out of the tunnel, it's a bit like going, this used to be a school um, which produced, you know, Etonians or something like that. And it's like... Well, no, because what we do now is we train them all up and we get them to play the West Ham way and then we go <laughs> first time. We'll go and buy we'll go and buy some players who, you know, like Anderson <laughs> spend sure, sure. on someone like that. And it's like, well, you didn't even throw the dice, you didn't even give them a shout, you know. So we change the carpet to the conveyor belt of youngsters. <laughs> yeah, or old fogies come this way. Strike this <laughs> board for 30 years come and have a little go down here and then you can then after that you can go out to the arabs <laughs> you 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 said a sentence in there i was remembering it then I, I i i lost lost it but it was something like you said we've been spoiled and then you said something like what we are satisfied with has changed and i thought that was absolutely fantastic what you said there when when i edit this i'm going to go back and find it and just listen to it again it was such a brilliant oh. summary oh, however yeah, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it in a future video in case nobody's made it this far in the video. I'm gonna use it in a week's time. Oh, I'll make up, make on. It's my own comment, and um, anyone that's not made this far, I think. Well, that's really good of you, Jill. That's a really good center. I think I know. Thank you. Um, 
but Perry, you still haven't given me an answer, right? That was a really good chat, right? But what's your answer about David Moyes? Um, would you, at the minute, New Deal, let him go? Where are you at the minute? Um, I'm wary of saying let him go because of who comes in. Yeah. When we have, we have change at West Ham, um, we've 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 had some monsters. Down there. And it's and it works the same you know, with with managers as it does with players who come to the end of their career and stuff like that. Go over West Ham. And certain foreign players will say, Go over there, you don't even have to play. You'll get a few million for it. And do you see what I mean with that? It's kind of like um the managers I would love to see would be like you kind of oh, I mean Gary O'Neill is doing fantastic, he's an ex West Ham. He, you know, that guy stuck two fingers up the Bournemouth. Um, he, he didn't do anything wrong there. And am I getting this right? And I, yeah, with yeah, 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 hundred year ban on so far, yeah, and stuff like that. And the fella at Birmingham who did really good. No, you're out because Wayne Rooney fancies being a manager. It's that old name. Oh, he's a big name and all that sort of stuff. Um, I can't see. Who's the guy we keep coming up? You mentioned him the other night. Well, still. Yeah, I mean, I was watching it the other night, and it was only when you just went, I don't know who he is, because I was thinking, well, my, my my football brain feels really inferior here, but who is Will still? Is he brilliant, or was he in an old Norman Wisdom film or something? I don't, I don't know. But um, the only thing I can say is, is that see where we are at the end of January. To be honest with you, really, because we could either be in, I don't know, we'd be in trouble, but we could be out of a couple of cups um, and not doing well in the league, um, in which case then it's too much of a slide. Then. Yeah. Um, and I think this Stiden stuff, um, there's so much going on there. Um, and, and he probably, Moyes is probably just thinking, right, what are they planning? What have they got lined up? And they're edging their bets. Because if it goes good, brilliant. But then he could turn around and go, no, actually, I want to leave. <laughs> you offer him a new contract. But I don't. I, I have to say, if it really come down to it, you know, um, the negativity would, would tip me over the edge to say, no, you know, thank you very much. You've, you've done really well for us. You've set up a platform and stuff like that. But you haven't advanced with it the way that it it, it should be. But I hope you don't. I don't want anyone to lose their job and stuff like that. But listen, listen to people. You know, listen to us. We're not stupid. Right, let's move on to the next topic. It says yeah, here, um, your son-in-law, Jav Boy. Oh, no, wait, that's Danny's questions. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the best ones I have for Danny. My son-in-law's a welder. <laughs> 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 is he as good as Jared oh, Bowen? Yeah, go on. What is it then? You got your Danny Dyer again? No, uh, um, signings. Caduce. Mav We've not really seen much of Maripanos, but Caduce and Alvarez and um, James Ward Prowse. I mean, they've hit the ground running. You impressed with them? Well, yeah. I mean, when have we had that as well? We haven't even had one new signing hit the ground running. You know, it's that's that's how mad it's been. We've had. Per you know, play, players being out for half a season injured in the first game. We've had players who have never even got going. You get four. <laughs> um, you know, and it's it's mad, isn't it? Because if you think about it, really, let's say, well, seven, eight months ago, we didn't know any of them. They, yeah. weren't, they weren't West Ham players. And now... They weren't, they weren't even here for the Bournemouth game. First game of the season, we hadn't signed any of them. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. And it's kind of like... You know, and you've got to think with Pakatar in that as well. He's, he's yeah. not been there long. Um, and to look at the team now and go, well, they're on it. They're, they're first on it, aren't they? Straight away. Um, but again, that's another Moyes worry, is that you kind of go, if you stifle those sort of players, you know, if, you, if you're telling them to play a certain way, they're good enough to just go, fuck off. You know, I'm going. I want, you know, we've got to sell the whole thing to them. Um, and, and 
Yeah, he, he, he's, 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 it's kind of like Mavropanos. I like the look of him. I like the look of him more, I hate to say it, but than um, Zuma. Um, certainly, I mean, Oggy's kind of like, you know, he's he's there, but that's another one we have to look at. This is the, that belt going out. Um, and that goes back to his whole thing of just like, you've got to, you've got to play some kids. Give them a go, you know. Um, but I like the look of Mavropanos because he looks like um, Clark Gable. Then he in Gone with the Wind, you see, with a little tash. And, uh, that's, that's, that's just my own little film. I don't read anything in it. Um, no, but I think he, you know, you can't expect him to be absolutely brilliant, but he's made a few rickets. But ultimately, he's not made as many rickets as I get. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, you know, they're all fallible. Like that, but yeah, I mean, and then you add, we, we, we've already got Bowen. You know, he's, 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 he's quality. Jared Bowen, he really, I'm not just saying that because I want to invite for the wedding and all that sort of stuff. Um, but no, he is. I did text Dan when he signed that new contract. You know, an eight-year contract or whatever, and I just texted him and I just went, so those fireside chats with a son-in-law paid off. Did <laughs> <laughs> back, he, went, he went, go nowhere, Paul. <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, this, the, 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 the signs of good, I, I kind of just think, add to that, I can't stress enough, giving that kid a chance. Um, and if if they if he doesn't, gee, he'll go in January. He'll do the same as the others. He'll just go. No, we're, we're not getting in. He, he I, you know, even when I was on the bench, they, he was putting on ins rather than me or moving, bumming across or whatever. What what you know? What is the harm? <laughs> it's just, that's just that's the thing that I cannot stand about Moyes. I cannot stand. Like, how do good players, how do we get players? Well, what's the game the other week? Was it international? Was that oh, 17 year old kid, 16 year old kid, Brazilian or whatever? And he was just made mince me of everyone on the pitch. It was, it was the wife, what's his name? The one Rooney. Um, his name was Rooney against Man United or whatever. I can't remember. But uh, was it Bergadi? Berg. Yeah, but his name is Rooney Berg, whatever. Ber yeah, Bergardi or something, yeah. But, it, you know, it's kind of, it strikes me as being that if Moyes watched him, he'd be a bit like, yeah, but he'll get found out when he plays in the first team, trying to do all that. And it's like, well, Pele didn't. <laughs> you know, Bobby Moore didn't. Bobby Moore was the youngest England kid. All those sorts of things, you know, like where you kind of just go, they had to start somewhere. They had to be given a game, and they and they leapt on it. Yeah, you yeah. Well, you look at you look at Man City. Uh, Pep trusts Rico Lewis. Rico Lewis plays in in some of the big games as well. Pep's trusting yeah. Rico Lewis in there. Evan Ferguson smashing at Brighton. You know they've saved themselves a, tens of millions, not needing a striker because they've gone and got. Ferguson through, and I just find the reasoning for not giving me. But I mean, the thing that it's something, it's small things that irritate me though. He got Mubama's age wrong the other day, and it's not the biggest deal in the world, but small things like that are really irritating. Yeah, um, um, Moy said he's, he's 18, etc. He turned 19 a couple of weeks ago, so he got his age wrong. But he said, you know, that was bad, though. yeah, and he said, what other 18 year olds are playing in the Penny League? But you go through the rest of the Penny League, and <laughs> there's teenagers playing at every club bar of ours. You know, Newcastle had um, a bit of an injury crisis with their hands forced, so they played, what's it, is it Miley? I think his name was. He, uh, yeah. He started for them. Okay, he might not have been the best player on the pitch. He they, they lost the game, but that'll do him the world of good for his experience and his confidence going forward. And and you know they're bringing. When he goes on, he that experience is a bit like yeah. okay, I'm older now. Yeah, you know? and he was he was the only youngster playing that day as well. It's not like how threw all the kids in. It was just that one youngster that went in because of an injury crisis. Fine, here's your opportunity. But that's. Sometimes, and I don't have a problem with that. If a youngster has to wait for a problem in the first team, whether it's suspension, injuries, just bang out of form, fatigue, whatever, and then you get in. Well, that's happened with us that Ings is bang out of form, Antonio's out of form, can't play twice or doesn't play twice a week. So the opportunity has been there to utilize him. 
he's just chose not to. And then on Saturday, when he's not even on the bench, it's just the right. That's the thing that really bothers me. Is it's 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 kind of like him, Roy is using that him not signing a contract as an excuse to do that. It's like you've been naughty, um, and I'm not even going to put you on the bench now. Yeah. It's just that's despicable. That's like give the kid encouragement because you might fucking need him one day. Yeah, you know? it's, it's chicken and, and egg. Yeah. He won't sign a new deal because he's not getting minutes. Now he's not getting minutes because he won't sign a new deal. Well, there's only one conclusion, and that is we run out of time. So Mabama leaves because he's not had any minutes, and Moyes won't give him minutes because he won't sign a new deal. We'll still have Danny Ings <laughs> at the end of January, and Mabama goes off to Chelsea or Man City or whoever. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's that's that's. I, I keep going back to it, but that's my. Bugbear with Moyes is stubbornness. It's 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 a lot of people's Perry. It's a, it's a lot of people's, and I know people will say, "Well, who has he got wrong, etc." But I just think the window of development for these young players is so so small that you can't judge them what they go and do after because it, 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 life just doesn't work like that. But also, you only need to get one wrong for it to really blow up in your face because we've seen what happens when you get it right with Declan Rice, and that is you. They were all going to be that good. But essentially, we've had a £100 million sale thanks to Declan Rice coming through the academy. Ben Johnson is off, but in January, we could still recoup a few million for him if we wanted to. Had we treated him a little bit better and looked after him a bit better, he might have been a... Up as well, do you know what I mean? It's kind of like he never had a consistent run on one position. Yeah. You know, you're, you're a utility player, and in some ways you're damned for being a utility player. Yeah, I, I, I always think it's bad news if you can play... In three in three different positions, or you get used in three different positions. I, I it's 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 the old um, jack of all trades, master of none, isn't it? Where you don't yeah. really, you can't really nail down a position because you might be needed elsewhere in the team at a later date as well. So you can't be the right back because we need you to cover left back as well. So it's a bit of a an issue, it's, I think, sometimes. Someone like that on your bench. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> now it seems a bit like, well, no, you know, you need to be number one at what you're doing, sort of thing, and. But how do you get to do that? You know. Yeah. So, uh, right, last last thing, Perry, before we wrap it up, what's your hopes for the rest of the season? Because at the minute, we're top of the Europa League, ninth in the Premier League, in the quarterfinal of the Cabra Cup, got the FA Cup coming up. But the flip side is that um, had we lost at the weekend, we could have been 16th presently. So that's how tight the, yeah, yeah. the, the, the table is at the minute. But what's your hopes between now and the end of the season? Those two wins were massive. We We, we really did need those. Um, and I think with a break, for, funny enough, this break is at the right time for us in that sense. It's kind of just like, right now, let's, let's get back together and gather around as it were and see the games we've got coming up. There's a few winnable games coming up. Um, my worry with the Europa League is that we're going to end up we, we qualify, as it were, but who we now draw, it's that, that's that different thing of who drops down from the Champions League. Who do we get with that? But then another side of me just goes, well, we've been really good at cup football. Yeah. We really have. And it's kind of, you know, it's a game. I think the mentality of a lot of the players is, is this is one off. This is one off, even when we're playing group games and stuff like that, or two left. But the actual game itself, I think we've got very good at managing those sort of games. Um, and we have surprises for other teams there. Um, um, shame we got Liverpool. Shame we got Liverpool away. But again, there's this sort of suicidal mentality in my head that it's like, <clears throat> you know, well, why not? They've got Man U and Arsenal either side of our game as well. Yeah. So if you're talking about saving players and, and this and that, or possible injuries, suspect or not suspected, but um well look, you know, we're in it. If if we were playing them in the final, we'd be buzzing. Yeah. And we'd go into Wembley going, Come on, it's 90 minutes. Well, okay, there's a couple more 90 minutes to go, but there's no reason why. We couldn't go up there and get a result against Liverpool. They, they, you know, they have bigger fish to fry, as it were, but not for much longer. I think we're, I think we're going in the right direction. 
I just think that there's a few things that need ironing out um, and, you know, things that we've just discussed. The um, tinkering, tinkering with the old thing, get shot of some dead wood, seriously. I know it's easier said than done sometimes. But, um, and, you know, play people in the positions that they are best at. It's kind of, you know, when, when, especially when it's not injury based. That's the that's the point. It's just uh, it's if you have to do that sort of stuff, then you have to reshuffle and whatever. But when you've got Caduceus, when you've got Bowen, when you've got you know, and uh, and don't get me wrong as well with Antonio, I love Mickey, I really do. I mean, he's been brilliant for West Ham, but I see him more now as being a really good impact sub. Yeah. Um, and you know. You and there's start... nothing wrong with that, and there's nothing wrong, especially at that age. There's nothing yeah. wrong with being an impact sub. And and you know, like we were talking earlier on before, when you saw that Ings warming up, and whatever, the opposing manager is going, oh, you know, brilliant, rubbing her hands together. Sorry, Danny, I'm not, you know, whatever. But um, but if they see Antonio, like he's he's a big bastard, isn't he? you know what I mean? And you know what he can do. You know how he can bully players. You know how he can turn, and he has got to turn the page. He just he, he can't use it all the time. Which brings us back to Mavuma, who can. But, yeah, just things like that. It, it, I don't think it takes much, D, to, to actually for us to sort of... I still I still see us, genuinely still see us, eighth at a minimum as a finish. I, re, I really do. Um, we've had our wobble. That's another thing now. I look at... Do you know what I mean? Tottenham's is just starting again. Um, but... <laughs> We've had us. That's the way. It, that's the way we should sort of gather around the troops now and just be like, right, look, brilliant start. We know what we can do. Now we've we've done a wobble, and now we've come through that. And look at where we are still. We're in a brilliant position coming up to Christmas. Push on, push on. Um, and that's just kind of, you know, that's all we can do. That and that. I'm crossing my fingers there, and I can't do it because I've got off foot. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll take that um, eighth minimum. I'll be I'll be happy with eighth full stop, and hopefully we can do something one of the cups. I think the Europa League. I don't fear it. I don't fear it as much as you, because no, I know. But what I mean is that no, you're you're, you're absolutely right, G. I, what I mean is, um, I kind of it's 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 going to be a lot tougher. But then I think, well, hang on a minute. Two years ago, yeah, we were in the semi-final, and I'm sorry if the quest hadn't got sent off. And yeah, you know, we never got a fair crack at it. We conceded a goal after ninety seconds, and the second leg, Creswell got sent off. We never got a crack at that semi-final. And we, and we, you know, the other encouraging thing is as well, we have to just go think of all those games after years and years of no Europe. How many games have we played in the last three years in Europe? I mean, it must be knocking thirty now, thirty odd or something like that, and. We've lost two. <laughs> lost two, drawn one. We've won. <laughs> not is it? <laughs> it's not just not too shabby. <laughs> I, I don't fear the Europa League because I actually think <clears throat> it would be better for us when we play more difficult teams. It sounds really weird, but they'll have the ball. And I think we're better without it. We've seen yeah. it against Olympiacos when it's like, you have the ball, what are you going to do? And we can struggle against teams like that. But when we, and I think this is where the knockout in the Europa League came round when we played Sevilla and Lyon, they were happy to come at West Ham. Oh, little old West Ham, let's get at them. Who are they? Let's go. That suited us down to the ground. They just they just walked in. They played exactly how Moy If Moyes could pick how an opposition would play, he would pick what Lyon did, which is attack West Ham, throw the kitchen sink at us and let us pick them apart on the counter-attack. And I think... The group stage is trickier for us because we're coming up against teams that fear us a little bit. They look at us, whoa, I notice it when I'm doing, when I do the opposition fan chats, yeah. I notice it because they, they look at West Ham as this big giant and, you know, good. But we've got, you've got the, a fan of Olympiacos who, you know, they've been, if they don't win the title, it's a bad season. That's the standard of that club. And they're looking at West Ham going, bloody hell, that's a massive club. We're not going to get near them. We can get a point at home. We'll bite your hand off of it. 
But in the knockouts, if we start coming up against the more prestigious clubs in European football, I think it might suit us a little bit. Sure, they'll have better players, they'll probably have a better manager. But tactically, I think it might actually suit how we want to play because we, we let them drop, we pull them on like we do. But that is that is a frightening little triangle up front there on the break I, for any don't know what European team you are, they don't want them. Yeah, so, and, and then we've got the January transfer window, so we might add to that little triangle. You know, Stiden can work his magic and get a striker in. Um, obviously, we'll lose Caduce during the African Nations, but. Like I said, hopefully we can offset that. Yeah, Garrett goes away. Kone goes away, but that doesn't really bother us. And um, Saeed, Ben, Ramp, so the four of them go. But I say not all. I think there's two penalty teams don't have anyone going. But most teams have got at least one player going off yeah. to African Nations. And it's not that long. I think there's a, I think there's maybe four Premier League games they'll miss at most. And that's if they go all the way through to the tournament. So Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'd like to say, Jay? It's like thinking back on like that our European travels in the last three years. What I've always wanted to see is when I go abroad, go to Spain or somewhere like that, you know, the, the, the gift shops with the lilos and things like that. I want to see a West Ham towel up there. Or a West Ham, you know, Man United, Tottenham, Chelsea, the, the Premier League shirts that they have up there. And it's kind of like, and I go, sometimes again, I go, do you have West Ham? Uh, and they go, no, 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 no. And I see, oh, well, I've put it in your head. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like maybe order some West Ham towels or that because that's that's when you know that the words travelled. You know, when you're saying about them thinking like we're we're a, a big team, and you know, we have to remember that as well. It's a really good point, Jay. Yeah. We you know we, we we've made a mark the last few years, and you know, we need to keep doing it. We we yeah. need to again, we need to kind of have a good old run at it because we, we're we good at it. Amazingly, we are really good at it. I mean, Moyes is a better manager in Europe than in the Premiership in a funny way. It's like... It suits us. The pace is slower. It suits us. The game's not as quick. The game's not as like, a fast-played tempo as it is in the Premier League and I think that suits us um, a bit better where teams tend to have a slow build-up and then can commit numbers forward and it plays into our hands so that we can hit them on the counter attack. And we've got what two months till knockout football it depends if we win the group. Assuming we win the group, we don't have knockout football until March. So the African Asian players will be back by then. That's so got, really yeah, we've got three months really to really just tweak the team so that come the knockout stages of the Europa League, the, the boys are primed, ready to go. We've got the solution to what we're doing up front. We've got a position for Caduce. We know our best centre back partnership because I don't think we know it at the minute. I, I think I suspect it might be a Gerd and Mav for Panos will be the best pairing out of all the centre backs that we've got. And um, we might bring in one. I always say in January, bring in one player. That's all you need. All you need is one player that can come in and go straight into the team. And there's a bit of a myth that Moyes doesn't put players in straight away. And I think, well, I think it's a myth because if you look now at the team with Caduce, Alvarez and Warpress were straight in like that. And Caduce had to be a bit patient, but we were winning. Not that long for him. No, I think he's been, I think he's gone in relatively quick. And Mavropanos is having to wait, but only because the captain is ahead of him. So he's sort of having to wait for the captain to be out of form before he gets his chance. But if we can get in one player in January that can get into the starting 11, that's a successful January as far as I'm concerned. And if we can get someone, and when we get it right in the last few years, Bowen, Suchet, Jesse Lingard, we can actually bring in somebody that's damn good in that window. And if we can get one, yeah. and Steiden and Co. have had months to prepare for the January. They've had months to get ready for the January transfer they window. Must they must have. And yeah. we have... I'm not yeah. quite. Do you know what I mean? We have, we've got money. Don't start telling yeah. me. Off. Um, so. I just, you know, and, and uh, so going back to my man, my boomer as well. It's just <laughs> if we no, but if we haven't, got, we don't get another forward in. in general. I think that's the one that's it's been lacking for years and stuff. But you know, a a, a, a figurehead on it. It would be like the Red Arrows, mate, going against teams. You know, like with that midfield. Alvarez there, you know, Wall Prowse, Caduce, Bowen, bang. I mean, if I saw that lineup. I I I hope. I hoped with Steiden, um, all the focus is on what Steiden does 
bringing players to the club. Mm. There's a, there's a, there's another half to Stiden's responsibility, and that's getting players out of the club. And yeah. I actually, I actually hope he sells Ings or Antonio, possibly even both. I hope he sells them with or without the manager's permission. I said, no, 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 I'm in charge of transfers. I'm getting rid of that player because you've not used him or you've not used him correctly. So I am over- I oversee the squad. You manage it. You're not using him. Yeah. Um, it's money. Yeah, so I actually hope, because in, in, in the summer, I, I hoped we would have sold Antonio to force Moyes to do something different. So you, if, if Antonio's here, you'll keep using him, but if we sell him, then you're going to have to come up with something different or we'll give you a new strike and you're going to have to use him and get on with him. So I actually hope in January that we sell Danny Ings. So Moyes has got no alternative but to either A, use Mubama, or B, use the new guy if we bring in a striker to replace him. So I'm hoping Sliding is in charge of outgoings as well as incomings in January. And I'm quite hopeful that that will be the case, pal. I think he's savvy enough, that geezer. It's like, you know, um, obviously never met him or anything like that. But it's kind of like what he's doing is better than anyone's done. At West Ham in however many years. I mean, you know, the money that was wasted on some players. And also, again, not even like big, big signs in, in, in January transfer windows and whatever. It's, you know, we'll buy seven or eight players, a couple of loans and stuff like that. And he's still chucking balls up in the air. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like you say, one, get, get, a, get a great signing. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're banging on the money, mate. You're banging on the money. And you never know. You never know what happens. You, we could go on and win another bit of silverware. But anyway, Perry, thank you so much. Pleasure as always. Thank you so much for joining me and chatting to me for the last hour, or best part of an hour anyway. Um, I'll catch up with you towards the end of the season. And then... It's always a pleasure. Up okay. again. Come on, get, everyone. We'll get a definitive answer on your David Moyes stance at the end of the season, will we? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we'll, we, we, we'll, we'll meet again. We shall. But anyway, if you guys at home have enjoyed this video, please do drop a like on it by clicking the thumbs up. It helps the video, helps the channel. Subscribe to Hammer's Chat. And myself and Perry, well, we'll catch you at the end of the season.